So uh, one of the things I talked about was a number line. It was a number line in that that's an important physical um, characteristic or physical being that should be in your classroom. But I also talk about the idea of student work up on the walls. And I don't mean student work that just has a 100% or a smiley face or good work written on it. The idea of having student work that has written feedback, that has some punch to it, is very, very important. Um, you know, when you put just good work on it, kids don't know what about their work was good. So I want to see things like, this is what I'm looking for, is a great way to explain your thinking. I was able to follow your steps. Okay, good work. You can put the good work there because kids love to see that. But what about that work is good? Okay, and then you might also put something like next time maybe add a diagram. Okay, so you sort of give the kids something to look forward to um, and to work toward. And then other kids get to look at that and see affirmation of good work skills and good work product. All right, so there are models up there for them and it should be changing, it should be evolving. It doesn't have to be these neat, beautiful bulletin boards that are pre constructed, which is the way when I first began teaching that's what I did because that's the way that I was taught to do it and that was my experience but I've morphed through the years about having this be a living breathing entity that belongs to the kids and that's what I really want to try to um, get teachers to think about more deeply in terms of this uh, the sound of things um, I love lots of sounds and I love I don't you know people often feel sometimes when I first would walk into a classroom as a, as a new principal and I know the teachers would, would be telling the kids oh you know quiet 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 Dr. Moynihan is here no 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 I don't want quiet in classrooms I mean there's a time and a place for quiet but for the most part there needs to be engagement happening and how does engagement happen but by discourse all right so you want to hear some meaty conversations happening between and amongst kids between and amongst the kids and the teachers Teachers as well um, and one of the things you want to be hearing is good mathematical vocabulary that's modeled by the teacher but also expected of and modeled by the students as well um, you know you don't say things like um, borrow you don't say because we don't borrow. I know a lot of people use that when we're teaching how to subtract if you can say oh you can't subtract six from two which is actually wrong because you can't subtract six from two it's a negative number so we all of a sudden we tell the kids we shift in fifth grade or so saying oh now you can subtract a larger number from a smaller one but nonetheless we say what do we say oh go next door and borrow well if you borrow ten dollars from someone i think the expectation is that you're going to give that ten dollars back it never gets given back so that's not clarity of language it's really actually leading to a lot of i think some misconceptions in mathematics on the parts of of kids that oftentimes are hard to eradicate later on all right and now if i'm going to think about something from the feel of it all i love to have a feeling of perseverance happening there i talked about that risk-free environment that's important if it's a risk-free environment kids are more likely to persevere in solving something I think most teachers can probably remember or hear all the time when a child starts to start to starts to attack a task and within three to five seconds pushes back and says, I don't get it. The dreaded I don't get it. All right. I used to put I don't get it on a poster with the slash mark through it. It was not allowed. You are not allowed to say I don't get it in this classroom. Okay. We dig in and we you get to tell me this is what I understand about the problem. This is where I get stuck. All right. And so you have to dig in and you want to have that feeling of it's okay not to get the answer right away. That it's okay to struggle. It's okay to really um you know, think about your work and say, you know what, this was a wrong turn. I'm going to back up and try a different route. That's what it means to persevere in a task.